Hello and welcome to tonight's Year 9 Options event. My name's James Aldred and I'm the Head of School here at Garibaldi. Normally, I'd love to invite you into school to talk through the options process and give you the opportunity to ask any questions you may have in person and give you an opportunity to speak to subject teachers about the subjects and the courses on offer. Due to the ongoing pandemic situation, at this point in time, that's still not possible. However, I do feel it's really important to provide you with as much information, support and guidance as we possibly can to help you make some informed choices about the curriculum moving forward. Hopefully, by the time parents evening comes around on Thursday the 24th of February, we'll be able to invite you into school and if you have any last minute questions or you still need some uh, last minute advice and guidance from subject specific staff, you'll be able to pop into that evening and ask those questions that you may have. I'm hoping that by now you'll have started to receive some information about our options process. This, alongside the information we provide in this virtual event this evening, the parents evening in February and the school website, this should allow you to make some informed choices and should provide some answers to any questions that you may have. That's what the purpose of tonight is about, helping students to make the right curriculum choices to support future careers and aspirations. You might not know, or you might not be crystal clear at this point in time, what it is that you want to do when you leave school. Some of you may have an idea, some of you may have some particular interests, some of you may wish to deepen their knowledge and skills in particular subject areas. The Key Stage 3 curriculum, or the last three years, have all been about developing those interests and those, that knowledge and skills in different subject pathways, um, which will help you to make some of those informed choices into Key Stage 4. It is OK at this point to not know what you want to be when you're older, when you leave school. Key Stage 4 is not only about teaching you what you need for a particular subject, but it's also about helping you to develop and prepare you for the next stages of life post 16, whatever that may be and whatever that may look like. Careers advice, career support and guidance, you'll get that in abundance this year. Personal development work, character development work, attitudes to learning, they'll all be there to support you as well as the next two years progress. But tonight is about helping you as parents and you as students to give you some of that initial information, support and guidance necessary to hold some of them conversations at home about what the potential future may look like. I've used the word curriculum on this slide. Curriculum is Latin for pathway or a journey. So far, the pathway for students has been written because in year seven, eight and nine, they followed a range of broad and balanced subjects without any choice. So subjects such as English, math, science, geography, history, performing arts subjects, PE. It's given the opportunity for students to experience that broad and balanced curriculum and experience a range of subjects so far. However, it's at this point now as students are getting older and they've experienced these subjects where it's time to make those choices on what the final two years of specialist study looks like. You'll find from tonight that there are some courses on offer that they might not have experienced so far. And at this point, I would recommend talking to subject teachers, talking to students in those classes and accessing the school website to get a bit of an insight into what those subjects offer. This is still a broad and balanced curriculum in Key Stage 4. English, Math, Science, Personal Development, Spanish and PE are still taught to all students. However, that specialist curriculum now gives students the opportunity to, three, to choose three subjects that they would like to pursue further. Our curriculum is focused on making sure that we enhance the knowledge for each of those subjects. But it isn't just about passing exams. We cover the content, the knowledge and the skills required to be successful, not only in the exam, but to give that breadth of knowledge for life post Garibaldi. Our curriculum is set up to be inspiring, engaging and give that thirst for knowledge, which will help students progress later in life, but also continue to develop interest. It will allow students to develop characteristics and personal skills also needed to be successful later in life. I use these four phrases regularly. 
You've probably heard me discussing them throughout my assemblies and through other evenings that you may have attended. These are all based on my education and leadership philosophy. I'm not going to talk about them all in great detail, but the one I really want to focus on is high aspirations. And this is about being the best that we could possibly be, not having barriers and striving to achieve past what we're capable of. We're not all grade nine students and that's fine. I wasn't a grade nine student, but what I was always taught is to always strive to be the best and to look to build upon and improve on everything that we do. To that end, I talk regularly with students and staff about seeking out that extra 0.01. How can you add an extra little bit of value to all we do in every walk of school life every single day? Because those marginal gains will all add up to mean a huge success at the end of Key Stage 4. It's worth noting at this point in time, Key Stage 4 is hard. It's the first time students will access qualification level courses. That's fine. Everybody's in the same boat. What I expect is that students really work hard and look for that extra 0.01 in all they do and work with their staff to strive to make those um, positive achievements. For example, when feedback's provided, when marking's done, when homework may be set, when that extra support and intervention is provided, go that extra mile to ensure that it's done and it's done as best as could possibly be. I want to just share with you our track record of academic success. Now, what I'm displaying here is from two years ago. As you may know, because of the pandemic, performance tables weren't available. But two years ago, our year, our year 11s did extremely well as a year group. As you can see from this table, we were the sixth best school in Nottinghamshire. That's out of 73 schools. We were the first best school in Mansfield. And this is based on the progress that students make and the academic achievements at the end of year 11. I would suggest over the last two years, whilst performance tables haven't been available, we've continued to build on this success. And I would have predicted that the performance levels would have been higher than what I'm displaying on this table. This year, I'd be really confident to say that our year 11 students would have probably notched up two places on these progress tables. And that's because we've got a really dedicated staff team, really skilled and have really refined their curriculums to ensure students maximise their chances of success, but also allow students to develop into unique young ind individuals ready for the world of work and employment post Garibaldi. These are average scores across the year group as a whole. On the right, you will see the Progress 8 measure for disadvantaged students. You can see at the bottom of that chart that the national average for disadvantaged students is minus 0.45 in terms of progress. This means on average students across that year group across the country achieve nearly half a grade under what they were predicted to achieve. What you can also see at the top of that chart is that Garibaldi progress score for our disadvantaged students meant that our students achieved um, nearly 20% higher than what their predictions were. 0.2 extra of a grade on top of what they were predicted to achieve. Students at Garibaldi, despite the starting point or despite any disadvantage that they may have, go on to achieve really good marks. As a result of our inspiring engaging curriculum and as a result of students achievement over the over a number of years what I've displayed on screen here are a number of awards that the school has received in recognition for that exceptional student progress this comes about because of the hard work that staff put into the curriculum design the support and the pastoral care of students but also the fact that students work with us and know that we work hard for them so in return, work hard for themselves. They understand what's expected of them and they reap the rewards at the end of their options process and at the end of key stage four. So why are Garibaldi students so successful? Well, we're here for the students and what makes Garibaldi unique is that yes, we want students to do really well in exams, but we aren't just an exams factory. What we are is a school that truly cares about the students, 
that goes that extra mile and that works in cooperation with parents and students to make sure that students get the best possible experience, that support and intervention is tailor-made and that we're here at the end of a phone or the end of an email whenever you need us. It's about working in partnership. Essentially, we're all here to do the same thing. We all want your children or will be young adults in the next couple of years to go on to lead happy and successful lives. And our job at Garibaldi is to provide students with a big bunch of keys. And that big bunch of metaphorical keys will allow students to unlock and open any door they want to open later in life as a result of their success at our school. My promise to you is that we won't leave any stone unturned to ensure that your child achieves the best results possible and is the best that they can possibly be. From this point on, the students continue to have a mentor, but that mentor plays a critical role in supporting you as parents and the students in making effective choices towards their potential future careers or aspirations. We talk now more frequently about those career aspirations and next steps, what they want to do and the best route to get them there. The options process for students is probably the first time they're going to make some critical choices of their own. However, these choices cannot be unsupported. It's key now that we engage students <coughs> excuse me, in conversation about those option choices and why those choices are being made. It's important that you as parents talk to your children about the choices they're making and the rationale for why they're making them. Because once we set off and once the students start those courses in September on that journey, it's really difficult to catch up. We do, on a rare occasion, allow some students to change courses, sometimes because students may feel that they've made a real mistake on their course, cho course choice that they make and it isn't for them. But this is really infrequent because there's a lot of work that goes in up front, checking that the right courses have been made, asking for your signatures on the form to say that you're happy with them and that mentoring those students to make that final decision that those choices are right. Each student, each cohort is different. From here on, every student gets a real per personalised programme of study where they're well supported. We provide that support, but we also provide intervention where necessary to make sure that students are on track, but also to advise and guide students where the need arises. Tonight's presentation is the start of the journey into the key stage four. There is a caveat that always exists. We've put out information to you on courses. We'll publish the options form, but I do have to emphasise at this point in time that we do sometimes have to make changes. So we've given some potential blocks based on some initial surveys we've done of students. But there may be circumstances which may arise that we may face where staffing changes, for example, or guidance changes or exam boards change, or the number of students that opt for a course doesn't allow a course to run. So what we give to you tonight is a provisional options form and we'll try and stick to it as far as possible, but the caveat is sometimes we do have to make changes. In a few minutes time, Miss Stevenson will talk to you more about some of the courses and the options available and the process of, of what we go through from here on in. So I'm going to leave it here and I'm going to hand over to Miss Stevenson. I hope you find this evening informative and I hope in the very near future we can meet again in person. Please keep in contact, in particular with the mentor, and all mentors' email addresses and details are available through our website. Thank you for attending and watching this video, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Good evening, my name is Miss Stevenson and I'm one of the assistant heads of school here at the Garibaldi School. Um, and one of the areas that I work in is curriculum and teaching and learning. And as part of that role, um, I work with both staff and students to ensure that what we teach and the courses that we offer um, at Key Stage 4 and Key Stage 5 are right for the students here at Garibaldi. Um, not only to enable the best possible outcomes at the end of those courses, 
but to ensure that our students are able to pursue studies in their areas of talent and interest um, and to continue to enjoy their school experience. Uh, but importantly, we want to set students up really well for whatever pathway they may choose post 16. So choosing your options is a really exciting but potentially confusing time and it's really the first chance that students have had um, within their young adult lives to make what probably feels like a very significant life decision um, and students may be feeling very confused and unsure still at this stage and that's perfectly okay. Um, I'm hoping that the process that we've put in place um, over the course of this evening um, and, and the steps that you're going to take after this evening's event will help you to feel confident and to make the right decision for you. So the options process is intended to um, support you as much as possible to make the right decision but it didn't start here. Um, you've already completed a survey uh, earlier on in the year which has helped us to put together the option blocks um, and, and has given us an initial idea of how many students want to study um, particular options. So tonight is actually the second part of the process and it really is an opportunity to um, have a more formal discussion and a formal reflection back at home with parents and carers about some of the things that you've already talked perhaps to your mentor about, to Mr Hall about or to your subject teachers about. Um, so I would encourage you now that you've had a bit of a break over Christmas, some time away from school, not thinking about your option choices. Um, it's a really good opportunity now to think, actually, that's what I expressed an interest in before Christmas. Is that really something now that I've come back to my options booklet? I've had a look on the website. I've talked it through with parents and carers at home. Is this still what I'm um, what I'm hoping to study from September onwards? So tonight really is an opportunity to share the thinking um, and the discussions that you've already had with with somebody at home. Once um, tonight's event is over, you will be able to complete the um, form, the online form, and I will explain exactly how to do that shortly. And once those are submitted, a lot of work will go on in the background um, to set up our option blocks uh, finally for next year but it will take us a little bit of time to be able to confirm what your options are and we will hope to do that as early as possible in the summer term. So your GCSE option choices are just one of a number of choices that you'll be making over the coming years um, into your early 20s and as you can see um, from the slide there at the end of year 11, a number of different pathways open up to you again uh, for post-16 study, whether that's um, staying in the Garibaldi sixth form here with us or moving to a college or sixth form elsewhere to complete A-levels or vocational courses or perhaps moving down the apprenticeship level two or level three route. Whichever option you end up choosing um, after, after your GCSEs, we hope that you will secure um, a fantastic job at the, at the end of all of these routes. And often one of the questions that we're asked by both parents and students at the year nine stage is, well, I want to be this and therefore should I choose to do these subjects or um, I'm not actually sure what I want to do um, when I'm older and therefore I don't know which subjects to choose. And I would just um, reassure you that at this stage, it is actually very rare for any subject um, choices to prevent you from moving into any career or professional areas. Um, unless, of course, you're interested in studying medicine or engineering, in which case I would ask you to, um, to, to come and, and have a chat with us, ask questions. Um, which you can submit either by email, talk to your mentor, come and have a word with myself, Mr Hall, Mr Dawson, anybody in school will be able to best advise you about those specific courses that you may need to choose, as I say, if you're interested in a, in a career in medicine or engineering. Otherwise, I would encourage you to choose a broad and balanced range of subjects that you feel you're going to be successful in and that you feel you're going to enjoy and that are going to stretch and challenge you. Uh, but I'll talk a little bit more later about what I mean by choosing a broad and balanced range of options. So what subjects will you study at Key Stage 4? Well, there are a range of compulsory subjects, um, subjects that everybody will study. Um, so everybody will complete GCSEs in English language, English literature, maths, Spanish and science. 
um, and for some students this will be the triple science course um, which uh, where biology chemistry and physics are studied as separate courses um, but for other students this may be the combined course which is the equivalent to two GCSEs but again biology chemistry and physics are still studied within those two GCSEs that means that all students will get three option subjects to study over the course of year 10 and 11. But in addition to those core subjects and your three options, all students will receive their entitlement to PE, personal development, equality, diversity and religion, um, which will be de delivered through um, study period in the morning. And the majority of our students, that means, will work towards the nine GCSEs or an equivalent of nine GCSEs. The grading of GCSEs is slightly different to um, how it used to be, so you may already be aware that GCSEs are now graded um, not by letters but by numerical grades 9 to 1, um, with 9 being the equivalent of an A star star, um, with a grade 4 roughly being the same as the, um, the old grade C, um, and with a grade 5 <clears throat> being between a grade C and a grade B. Um, our equivalent courses, our vocational courses like our BTEX and Cambridge National course that we offer at Key Stage 4 are graded differently. So um, you can receive a pass, a merit, a distinction or a distinction star at the level one and two courses that we offer at Key Stage 4. Um, but what we've provided there is a table to demonstrate how um, those, those grades are equivalent to the numerical grades below. And the vocational courses that I've touched upon there, the BTEX and the Cambridge Nationals, um, whilst they do tend to have a greater weighting towards a coursework element, it is worth um, noting that they do also ha all have an examined element as well. So, um, for example, the, uh, the art BTEC course has um, an examined element where students will work under exam conditions for a certain number of hours. Um, and for example, the Cambridge National PE, while some of that work is practical and coursework based, there is an examined element that students are required to complete. Another important thing that I wanted to explain this evening um, was about the English Baccalaureate, which is also known as the EBAC. So it's really important to note that this isn't a qualification in its own right, but by um, completing a combination of the following subjects, English, Math, Science, either history or geography and a language, in this case Spanish, students can attain the EBAC um, and this combination of subjects is considered essential for many degrees um, and for many onward destinations post-16 and beyond. Um, so it's something that's really important to us here at the Garibaldi School because research shows that pupils' socio-economic background does impact the subjects that they choose at GCSE and of course, we know that this may determine opportunities um, beyond school and therefore for our students to be studying um, towards the EBAC pathway and for that to be open to all of our students, that's going to lead to the best possible opportunities um, for students in the future. So it's a, it's a very important um, aspect of the subject choices and, and it's why, one of the reasons why, there are certain subjects that we, um, that we say you have to choose um, and there are certain choices that we don't allow you to make in that sense because it's really important for all of our students to have this fantastic opportunity to study the EBAC pathway. Next, I'll take a few moments to talk you through how to complete the online options form, um, which is available via the home page of our website. Um, so when you get onto there, um, there's a couple of options to a couple of boxes, should I say, to complete with the students details. Um, and it's really important that the, um, the teaching group is filled in as the Spanish teaching group. So a student may be in, for example, B3 um, for English or maths, but actually their uh, Spanish teaching group may be slightly different to that B3 group. They may be in, for example, B2 for Spanish. So it's it's not um, it's not common for for students to be in a different Spanish teaching group, but please have that conversation with um, with your child if it's a parent or carer watching this video, um, and students please just take note of that box. That's really really important to note that initially. Um, the second part of the form, once you've inputted your personal details, um, outlines the option blocks. <clears throat> so we've got options one, two, three, and four in blocks. 
Um, and this is where things get a little bit more complicated, but hopefully we've set out instructions quite clearly in the blue box above. Um, but for clarity, if your teaching group, as in your Spanish teaching group, is A1, A2 or A3, you need to choose from the blocks that are indicated on the slide now. So if you're in A1, A2 or A3 for Spanish, you will need to choose one option from block two, one option from block three and one option from block four. For those students who are in B1, B2, B3 or B4 for their Spanish teaching group, so anybody who has a B before their Spanish teaching group, you will need to choose one option from block one, one option from block three and one option from block four. So a little further down the form, this is where you actually make your choices and we set the form up in such a way that um, if you indicate the correct Spanish teaching group, the block that is not applicable to you will not be shown. So just take a moment to check that that's been entered correctly um, and make your choices accordingly. Every student will need to make a reserve choice in each of those blocks. Um, so we may not be able to offer each of the students first choices. So please do think carefully about those reserved choices in addition. And we just ask a parent or carer um, to, to sign at the bottom to, to pop their name in just to say that you have been a part of this process and have had that discussion with your child. Just a couple of additional things to note before I hand over to um, the achievement lead for year nine, Mr Hall. Um, although it's quite unlikely, I do have to make you aware that there may be some changes to the final um, course titles um, before the option process closes. Whilst it's unlikely, there are sometimes occasions where exam boards make changes that are outside of our control. Um, but whilst it's unlikely, we'll, we'll inform you as soon as possible if this were to happen. Um, and unfortunately, um, again, it doesn't often happen, uh, but depending on the popularity of some of the courses, it might not be possible to run them um, if, if we don't get the numbers. But again, it's not something that often happens, uh, but students and parents and carers will be made aware of, of at the earliest opportunity if that is the case. So there's nothing left for, uh, for me to say tonight other than thank you for listening. All the very best of luck. Please stay in touch if you have any questions or queries. Um, we are here to help and we want you to feel su supported um, through this process. So, um, you know, if you have any questions or queries, please use the links and the, the email addresses that are provided to get in touch. Um, but without without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Mr Hall. Thank you. Good evening. I hope you're all well. And I personally just want to take this opportunity to welcome you to the Year 9 Virtual Options Evening. Slightly different to how we may well have done it traditionally, but needless to say, I hope this evening provides you with the uh, right amount of information, support and guidance to help you make the right decisions when it comes to those subject choices. And if those decisions can't be made this evening, that doesn't matter, because what I'm going to also do towards the end is give you some key dates as to when those deadlines might be and some other information on some other evenings that will help provide additional information. So, first of all then, my role as an achievement lead. Well, I've been achievement lead for this year group now, which will be coming up to the third year. Now, as an achievement lead, like all the other achievement leads, we are there really as a supportive measure to help and guide students in making the right decisions, in making the most amount of progress, and that can be progress not just academically, but as a personal side of things as well. Because at the end of the day, as the title would suggest, we want every student to achieve. And that's every student, not only just within our year group, although that is my priority at this stage, but every student, the ones, the one that I teach and throughout the school as well. Now, as an achievement lead for this year group, what a fantastic year group it has been throughout the time that they've been here at the Garibaldi School. And as the information would suggest and from data, on average, this year group is the best outperforming year group in terms of attendance, in terms of ATL, and in terms of progress. Now, every single student plays a part in that. And I would like to think that on our journey over these next couple of years through that GCSE, we will continue to excel. And my role there is to make sure that, that is the case and to continue being the best performing year group. So 
that's essentially what my role is. Now, there's a couple of bits of information that I would like to share with you. And this is about that support through these option process. Now, you've already been given a range of information. That information talks about what options can be given, what options you should take, what forms part of the English baccalaureate, what forms part of your core subjects. But if those decisions are still a little bit unclear and you're still not sure where to go with that, or there is some support that can be on offer. First port of call, there's always your mentor. They're the people that know you. They're the people that have been with you fundamentally since the time you've started at Garibaldi. And so as a result, they're the key people to go to as a port of call for asking any questions if you come across things that you're unsure of. Now, in addition to that, there's your subject teachers. Once again, if it's about a subject matter that you're unsure of, you're unclear about, please go and see those. Speak to those subject tutors and subject teachers. If it's about information regarding what course is about, what it's about, the information that's going to be delivered, how it will be delivered. Following on from that is myself. And my contact details are there along with your mentor group. There's also a link there that takes you to that Garibaldi Year 9 webpage. And again, further information on contact details can be found there. But there's myself there you can come and talk to. In addition to that, we have the personal development lead, Ms. Bleasdale, who is also on hand to talk about careers, where to find information on careers, and to guide you through the use of Unifrog, of which I've got that information up on this web page there. At any point, I would advise you to please contact these people. And that's not only as a student, but as a parent. And make that contact via email or phone. Following on from that, in terms of making these choices then. Now, a couple of weeks ago, in fact, a couple of terms ago, for that matter, a half term ago, I gave students an information sheet. And on that information sheet, promoted the fact to go away, introduce this to your parents, to yourselves, and to talk through what those options look like. And in addition into that, there were some reasons as to why it is we should make a choice. What choices should they be based on? And as you can see from those bullet points there, many of those good reasons are about the fact that you enjoy the subject, that you want to take something from it. Maybe it's going to help you, support you in your next route post-16, whether that be in a career, whether that be apprenticeships, whether that be college, A-levels. Please, if you're unsure, come and ask. Other reasons why we shouldn't take or make those decisions to choose a subject, I've highlighted in the red there. I'm not going to read them all. Um, Obviously, you can pause this video at any point to have a look at those. But I would like to think that the majority of students at this point, having thought about, had those discussions in class, in mentor time, perhaps with yourselves already, have got a good grounding and a good understanding as to what subjects they want to take. Now, if it is, when you look at those option blocks, it doesn't quite work out, then that is why I want you to ask those questions and come and find myself and your mentor and to discuss that, and we can look at those options and how it is that we can cater for your needs. So leading on to those core dates, well, here we are. Now, currently, as we stand, Wednesday the 19th of January, okay, that's that options evening. This is that introduction to that process. Even though students have been introduced to it, even though you may have already had those conversations, and I personally have had conversations with students and parents already. But needless to say, you can see from the website that that portal is now open. That does not mean, though, you have to put those entries in this evening. If those entries don't quite work for you, don't feel stressed, don't feel worried about the fact that you've got to make those decisions tonight. There's parents even up and coming. It's a great opportunity for you to talk to those subject leads, to discuss what those subjects look like and what that means as a potential route. That area there that's highlighted in red, Wednesday the 9th of March. Now that's the deadline for them submitting that online form that you may well have seen this evening already. So you've got plenty of time, but I please would suggest that you go away, have a think, have a talk, both with all the people I've mentioned earlier. And certainly, if those option blocks don't quite work out for you at this stage, I'm sure that we can look into an alternate. 
following that deadline, we will then have additional conversations again, which will open up for individuals to talk about those option clashes potentially. And finally, that summer term, that's where you're likely to receive that confirmation of those options as to whether that would work for you and what it looks like moving into that GCSE. So at this stage, I want to say thank you very much. I certainly hope you will be in touch if necessary. Take care, and we'll see and speak to you all soon.